We play and call it work. Hey folks, Janine from Mini Wargaming here with another how-to video for you. In this video, we are going to continue work on this Primark Fulgrim Mini, and we are going to paint the bright red cloak. As always, if you have suggestions for something you'd like to see in a future how-to video, please leave them down below in the comments. Now we're going to begin by airbrushing a few red layers onto the cloth of the cloak. However, since I have so much of the mini already painted, I want to protect the work that I've already done. So I'm going to take a little bit of painter's tape and I'm going to tape off all of the areas that I've already finished painting. I just wrapped it around all of the areas that were already painted, making sure to get all the way around all of the long purity seals and all of the armor. Once we've got all of the armor taped off and the cloak's ready to go, we're going to begin airbrushing. We're going to start using the color corn red. And I'm just spraying this out of my Awada HP CS Eclipse. I'm using a Badger Air Compressor set to about 25 PSI. And I just want to do small layers, slowly building up the color so that it doesn't go on too thick at first and I can add it in a very controlled way to make sure that I get even coverage without putting too much paint on the mini. Especially since this Fulgrim has a lot of very teeny tiny sculpted details, especially around the edges of the cloak. And if I get the paint on too thick, I'll lose all of those excellent details. I also want to make sure that I turn the mini and I get this red paint onto the underside of the cloak so that we get a nice bright red all the way around. After we finish with the corn red, our next color is going to be Mephiston red. As the cloth of the cloak twists and turns, I want to highlight the top of each of the folds, making sure that it's a lot brighter than all of the shadows, which I want to leave that deeper red. So this Mephiston is going on the top of each of these large folds. We're covering about 70% of our previous layer, just slowly applying small bursts of paint. As I get to this area that's underneath the purity seals the, that are covered by my painter's tape, I wanna make sure that I highlight that area as well because it would still be in light even though right now it's a little bit less accessible because of that bulky tape in the way. So I wanna make sure that I lower my airbrush and I spray there as well. After we finished with the Mephiston Red, our next color is gonna be Evil Sun Scarlet. This is going to be our last airbrushing layer. This is a very bright cherry red and it's really going to go on the top of the cloak, covering about 70% of that Mephiston layer. With this underside, even though the bottom of the cloak is going to be in shadow, I want to make sure that I get a little bit of the highlight, especially toward that outer edge, just so that the movement of the cloth is exaggerated even on the bottom side. Also, I want to do a couple layers of this color so that I can really make sure that I get a very bright red. So after the first layer has completely dried, I'm just going to spray over the top of it a little bit more to get just an extra level of brightness. At this point, I want to take the painter's tape off. Now, unless I am a magician, there's probably going to be some areas that are a little bit blank. And I would rather err on the side of having blank areas than spraying onto the areas that I've already had painted in different colors. So at this point, I'm just going to go through with the same three colors, Corn Red, Mephiston Red, and Evil Sun Scarlet, and I'm going to slowly highlight the blank areas with my brush to make sure that they're fully blended in to all of the airbrushing that I've done so far. Our next color is gonna be Wild Rider Red. I'm gonna mix this with a little bit of Lamian Medium before I apply it, and I'm going to be painting this on with a traditional brush and I'm going to be highlighting the top of these folds. I'm just going to do a very thin line on the very top, really exaggerating the top of the cloth. Once I finished highlighting with Wild Rider Red, 
I'm going to add a little bit of shadow to some areas using Karoberg Crimson. And I'm just using this to put a little bit more shadow back into the areas that are sculpted into the cloak, but were sprayed over when we did our airbrushing. That's mostly going to be these folds that are sculpted right where the cloak connects to the shoulder armor. I also want to put a little bit of this shade along the sculpted edging on the cloak so that there's a small shadow that's going to surround that whole area before I paint it with a gold a little bit later. After the Caraburg Crimson has dried, our last highlight is going to be with Troll Slayer Orange. This is also mixed with Lamian Medium. And we want to be pretty sparing with this paint. We're going to use it to just accentuate the very brightest areas and give them a little bit more contrast. However, if we use too much of this paint, we're going to turn our bright red cloak into a bright orange cloak. So we want to make sure that we're really just catching the very top edges of these folds, and really making them stand out. All right, and with that last bit of highlight, the red on this cloak is complete. Thank you so much for watching. If you'd like to see more how-to videos, I have another one where I'm going to paint the studded leather strips that come off the shoulder pads and the mini wargaming vault in the link down below in the description. If you don't already have a vault membership, you can go ahead and click the link, sign up for a seven day free trial and get access to my video as well as hundreds of other videos in the mini wargaming vault. So go ahead, click the link, start your free trial and happy wargaming.